Wilmington, Illinois is the quintessential American small town. They were a wonderful family. Uh, they were living the dream, and it all just shattered. Will you do a dance? Yeah. All right. Kevin Fox is your all-American guy. Melissa and Kevin went to high school together. They were high school sweethearts. We were still dating when God made plans for us, and we had Tyler. And then we got married when he was three and had Riley a year after that. He was just such a loving, doting father. I feel like that's what I was uh, put on this earth to do, honestly. Uh, that's my joy in life. Riley. He had an especially close relationship with Riley. The two of them were inseparable. Watch where you're going. The weekend of June 5th is a turning point in the lives of the Fox family. Mom goes out of town on a breast cancer walk. Kevin and my brother Tony were going to go to a concert, and my mom had the kids. 1 a.m., he picks the kids up, brings them home. It's late, so he puts them down in the living room. Watch TV. And then I went to bed myself. And what's the next thing that you remember? Uh, Tyler waking me up and said that Riley was gone. He gets up. He starts looking frantically all over the house. He thinks that she may be hiding somewhere. He looks in closets. He runs outside. So then I started panicking. He decides to call the Wilmington Police Department. After about 30 or 40 minutes, he calls to say that he can't find his child. When police showed up, one of the first things Kevin mentioned was the front door, which he remembered having, uh, he thought, closed and locked the night before. And, and when he got up that morning, that, that door was open. The police stated they found no sign of forcible entry. Kevin told the investigators that the lock on the back door was broken. Kevin's wife, Melissa, is still at the cancer walk in Chicago. I decided to call Kevin. He sounded so startled. I knew immediately something was wrong. He just said, Riley's gone. On this day, a lot is happening. Not only does Riley Fox go missing, but the police are responding to a burglary on the very same block. There is a neighbor literally across the street from Kevin. She had a section of her screen cut out. The door was unlocked. She had felt that someone had broken into her house. You gotta wonder, are these things connected? Police and the community mounted a massive manhunt. Three-year-old Riley Fox drowned body was found in a creek about four miles from her home. Forsyth Woods and Forked Creek suddenly become ground zero for this investigation, and the Will County Sheriff's Department is tasked with leading the investigation. There was a log jam further downstream. That's the location where I found the shoe. A little while later, they come across a matching sneaker. They take the tennis shoes, put them in evidence, and that was the end of it. And here's the thing. There's actually something written in the tongue of the shoe the letters E, B, Y. They never looked at those shoes. The child was held under the water. Her mouth taped shut. The forensic examination revealed that Riley Fox was alive at the time she entered the creek. Additionally, the autopsy revealed that Riley Fox suffered non-lethal head injuries and that a sexual assault had taken place. They did a rape kit, and they did test for blood, bodily fluids not belonging to Riley. There were about 20 items that were eventually sent to the FBI for forensic testing. The problem was there was this enormous backlog at Quantico. The funeral services were held at St. Rose Catholic Church. 6,000 people showed up. Within an hour of the funeral ending, police came to my house and they asked if there was any reason that I would believe Kevin to be capable of 
doing something like this. And before the question even came out of their mouth, my answer was no. I said, would you please talk to an attorney? No obligation. Chad felt that the police were focusing on Kevin. They kept dropping by the house. Kevin and I were like, we're fine. What do we need an attorney for? It had been four and a half months since Riley Fox disappeared when police say they have a development. It's the evening. Kevin's been working since 4.30 that morning. They go down to the police station. They took her down a hallway, and they took me. Um, it was like a room up on a stage. We walk up the stairs, and then it was real, real small room. They have the capacity to videotape the entire interrogation, but they don't. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he's, he looked at me and said, we have reason to believe that you killed, killed Riley. I stood up and started pointing at his face, saying, you know I didn't do this. Kevin says detectives then offer him a lie detector test. And he says one of the things they tell him is that this test could actually prove that he wasn't involved in his daughter's death. Now, this is a commonly used ruse during police interrogation. Get the suspect to take a lie detector test, then tell them they failed it as part of that process of breaking them down, of making them feel hopeless. I, I was just shocked. I, I couldn't have failed it. The Will County Sheriff's Office says that Kevin's account of this interrogation is exaggerated, that it's not accurate. Kevin says the police came to him during his interrogation and said, look, either you're this cold-blooded baby killer, in which case it's life in prison, or if you tell us that this was a result of some accident, things will be easier for you. That's how they get Kevin talking. Just tell us about an accident. So keep in mind, he'd been up since 4.30 that morning. He'd gone to work. Now he's in the middle of this 14-hour interrogation, and he confesses to it. Police construct a theory that he adopts in which Riley's killed accidentally, and he then stages it to look like a murder. He says, I thought everybody would see it as crazy. He said, I really thought that they would understand that this couldn't possibly have happened. Did you have anything to do with the death of your daughter? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. A lot of people will want to know, if you didn't kill Riley, how, how do you possibly confess to it? Say you were trapped in a, a burning room, and, and there was only one door, and the fire was just flaming around you. So you looked at this as your only way out? It was my only way out. He gets arrested. He gets taken to the Will County Jail and booked. The second he's arrested, Chad goes in, the older brother, and retains Kathleen Zellner as his attorney. Kathleen Zellner is one of the best criminal defense attorneys in the country. We will see them in court. Part of Zellner's great success comes from her ability to work with DNA evidence. Kathleen Zellner is worried Kevin's confession will be enough to convince a jury to convict him. She believes the only way to avoid a guilty verdict is through DNA. While Zellner's team continued to try to poke holes in the story offered by investigators, Zellner discovered that there actually was DNA evidence. DNA evidence was available in the murder of Riley Fox last June, but it required sophisticated testing. After that DNA evidence was sent out to a private lab. Test results arrived last night. The DNA did not match Kevin Fox's. They came back and said, this is not his DNA. We can't tell you who it is, but we can tell you it's not his. Kevin Fox is free after prosecutors concede there is now considerable doubt about his guilt. Prosecutors dropped all charges against the Wilmington father. If you want to take away one thought in this case is do the test before you make the arrest. Kevin Fox is ruled out. This is a game changer. Now you have to refocus this investigation. The DNA proves that you didn't do it. But then the question becomes, who did? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.